I want to thank you for taking the time to come to our very first educators workshop. Um, we'll go into the reasons why we're holding this kind of workshop um, in a moment, but I just wanted to welcome you and to thank you very much for taking the time out um, on a Saturday morning of all times um, to come and hear about the NBTs. So the reason that we chose to do this workshop was because we are aware that there is a lot of anxiety around these tests amongst learners. Um, you can't prepare for them, we don't have past papers, people want to know exactly what's, what's in these tests, we're not going to tell you that, but they want to know what's in these tests and how to prepare for them. Um, and then also there are a lot of misconceptions and rumours that go around about the NBTs. So for example, the NBTs are very expensive, the NBTs are inaccessible to uh, learners in rural areas, the NBTs uh, are a, an entrance ex exam that excludes certain kids from um, coming to university, and we wanted to address those misconceptions as well. And then finally, we felt that a workshop like this would help us um, to communicate to your learners. So we wanted to make you partners in communication about the NBTs um, to your learners. So our agenda this morning is that I'm going to give you a brief introduction to the context, to the NBTs, um, and then we're going to move on with Natalie, who's going to tell you about the national and regional performance on the NBTs in the last intake. So we talk about uh, years and in, uh, cohorts and intakes, and an intake would be the kids who are here, a 27 intake would be the kids who are at university at the moment, 20, and they would have written the NBTs in 2016. Okay. Um, then Natalie is going to move straight on to the quantitative literacy or QL test and then we'll hear from Pragashni who will be talking about the maths test and finally we'll hear from Sanet. Then right at the end we'll have wrap up and discussion but I'm pretty certain that all of our presenters will encourage discussions throughout their presentations as well so please feel free if you don't understand something or if you want something cleared up to discuss that with them. What are the national benchmark tests? There are a set of tests that measure how ready you are for university. Okay? And one of the misconceptions is that they duplicate what's in the NSC, what's in the metric um, exam, and they don't. They complement and support what's in the NSC. Okay? We'll cover that um, later as well. So there are three tests. There's the AL, the QL, and the maths. AL being academic literacy, QL being quantitative literacy, and maths being mat. Um, so there are three tests, but in actual fact, students write two tests. So they write the AQL, which is the AL and the QL combined, and the maths test. Um, and they're all multiple choice. So at no point will they be asked to write an essay or any of that. It's a multiple choice question. So again, to go over um, the complementarity of the NSC and the NBT, the simplest way of explaining it is that the, NBT, the NSC um, assesses how ready a, a learner is to leave school, so it's a school exit exam, whereas the NBT assesses how ready a learner is to enter university, so it's a university entrance exam. Right, so this is one of the questions that you asked. Um, how do institutions use uh, an, uh, an applicant's NBT scores? And one of the misconceptions is that the NBTs are uh, a barrier to getting into university because universities use the scores um, to decide whether or not uh, an applicant can get in to the university. Now, that's only partly true. Um, what happens is that universities, the, the way universities use the NBT scores vary um, often between faculties. Okay? Um, so it's up to the learner or for the, the, the LO teacher to find out how um, that particular faculty uses the NBTs. What also happens is that the NBTs are always used in conjunction with the NSC results. Right? And in different faculties, these uh, scores are weighted in different ways. So in a faculty like Health Sciences, you'll find the NBTs are weighted highly. In another faculty, they're not weighted as highly. Okay? So the thing to remember is that the NBTs are never used exclusively 
to decide whether or not a, a student gets into, an applicant gets into university, they're used along with the NSC scores. That's the one way that they can be used. The second way is for placement. And when we talk about placement, what we mean is if a, a learner um, gets a particular score in the NBTs and the NSC, we use those scores to decide, or universities use those scores to decide whether or not that um, applicant needs help, needs academic support when they come into university. So they might go to a bridging course, they might go to um, an academic development program, um, some sort of support that they would need that um, has been highlighted by the NBT scores. Okay? And then the last way that the NBTs can help is to help develop curricula within universities. So the weaknesses and the strengths that have been uh, identified by the NBTs can help uh, teachers and lecturers adjust their way of teaching and adjust their curricula. Okay. Right. Uh, another question that learners often ask is, which NBT do I have to write? So you've got your AQL and you've got your maths, and you get um, learners who get very worried about writing maths um, when they aren't strong on it or they've been writing maths literacy. Um, everybody writes the AQL test, okay? And good morning and not everybody writes the maths test. You only have to write the maths test if you um, are applying to a, a faculty that requires mathematics. So think of your health sciences, your sciences, your engineering departments, and so on. Okay. So one of the questions is how accessible the NBTs are. So people get very worried about whether we have enough test centers, whether the NBTs are accessible to learners who um, don't have enough money to uh, pay for entrance fees and so on. So I thought I'd address some of those issues. So first of all, you can see that from 2014 through to now, um, our writer numbers have been increasing. Okay, so at the moment we are averaging around about 85,000 writers a year. Okay. So your question about whether everybody writes the NBTs, um, no, not every learner writes the NBTs, but yes, every learner who is wanting to go into university writes the NBTs. Okay. Um, one of the misconceptions about the NBTs is that it's not accessible um, in terms of venues. So you get rural learners who are um, uh, 50 kilometers or more away from a test centre. Um, what happens to them? So um, we're always on the lookout for NBT venues um, for, to increase our venues. So as you can see here, from 2015 through to 2018, our number of venues has increased. Now what that means is that we're on the lookout for schools, for universities, for um, any kind of venue that will allow us to have uh, up to 200, 300 um, learners at a time that would be, be able to write the NBTs and that would have access to um, somewhere to sit for lunch, that would have access to bathrooms. Um, we want all learners to have sort of the same experience when they, when they write the NBTs. The other thing that we do with venues is that um, if we find that a learner, if a learner contacts us or their teacher contacts us and says, look, this learner is having to uh, travel 50 kilometers or more um, to get to an NBT venue, we then organize a proctor, an invigilator, somebody who would be able to sit at a school, with, at their school with them and do the NBTs on their own. So um, we try to make it accessi as accessible as possible. We also try to make it accessible to learners with special needs. And when we talk about special needs, we're talking about everything from um, a visual disability through to ADHD. Um, so as you can see, again, this is something that's growing. Um, we make it available on our website that uh, if a, a learner has special needs, and, and when we talk about, uh, uh, talk about this, then what we mean is that they are accommodated at their school in terms of special needs, um, then they can contact us and fill in a form and we can accommodate them. So we provide, um, we accommodate these special needs at particular venues. Um, and for example, we have our NBT tests available in Braille for visually impaired students and we also enlarge the text um, for uh, some visually impaired students. 
One of the other ways that we're trying to make the NBTs very accessible is through our website. So as you can see, in one year we had over half a million uh, visits and that translated to three million page views. We've also made available, you've probably seen, the NBT brochure that we distribute. That's available on our website and we've translated it into all South African languages. So we're trying to make that accessible to all learners as well. Um, and those brochures and bookmarks that we make available, we also distribute to all the tertiary institutions so that they can make those available on their open days as well. Um, if you're not receiving an email from me, then I'd like to ask why, because I have a distribution list at the moment of um, more than 300 schools, um, and we send out approximately three emails per year about the NBTs. So um, right at the beginning of the year to introduce you to the NBTs, later in the year to tell you about writer numbers and uh, any, any events that have happened, and um, we also point you to the exemplar questions, the brochures, any extra information that you need. Okay, so please come and talk to me if you're not receiving an email from me. Um, and then lastly, we're on uh, Facebook and Twitter. So this is to target our learners who um, uh, don't have access, say, to airtime. They can't get hold of the NBT help desk um, on their phone, so they can um, get hold of us on Facebook. And the nice thing about the social media platforms is that where the NBT help desk is, is available during working hours, the Facebook and Twitter platforms are available 24 hours. So, that, so what I've found is that a lot of anxious learners will get hold of me the night before or the mo morning before a test, and we can answer them in that way. Okay, and then lastly, the cost of the NBTs. What we're trying to do is keep the cost as low as possible. The costs are heavily subsidized, so we got a lot of funding from Standard Bank, which um, is coming to an end very soon, but what we've done is, uh, uh, from 2012, we brought the cost down to 80 Rand for the AQL test and 160 Rand if they're writing both, um, and we have kept it at that level since 2015. Okay, I thought I'd address two common anxieties about the NBTs as well um, that come up a lot on social media and that come up a lot um, on the NBT help desk. And the first is, how should I prepare and study for the NBT? Now, I um, put the slide up at uh, two events in KZN last week, um, and we had learners who um, were sitting there sort of with glazed expressions on their faces until this slide came up, and out came the notebooks, and out came the, the pens, and I said, you can't study for the NBTs, and they all went, oh, really? <laughs> um, it still is a, a problem um, in that it still builds, it, it, it contributes to the anxiety about the tests. And um, I'm afraid we can't allay those fears because what we're doing is we're testing the knowledge of the, of the applicant rather than what they've mastered on the curriculum, okay? What they will be able to do once they're faced with uh, tertiary education studies. Um, what I should also say at this point is that there are a lot of organizations out there who claim to prepare you for the NBTs. Um, I'm not going to name them. You've probably seen them. Um, they say that they're going to um, take a lot of your money and they're going to give you mock NBT exams um, and prepare you for the NBTs. Please tell your learners not to waste their money. Um, I'm sure that, that Pragashni will address this. Extra maths lessons, always great. If you want to cover your maths, you want to make sure that you're, that you're on top of your, your maths concepts, you know, go for it or, or address that in, in, in school, in extra classes at school. But um, as far as these organizations go, telling you that they're going to prepare you for AL and QL, it's just not going to happen, okay? What we have done is uh, we have made exemplar questions available on our website. You might have seen these. Um, they're part of the teacher's booklets. Um, if, you, if you haven't seen those, then please download them from our website. At the end of each of those teacher's booklets, we have exemplar questions up to 10 for each of the tests. And those tell the learners, this is the kind of question that you're going to be faced with um, in your NBT. Okay, so that's what the maths one looks like, and that's what the A. QL one looks like. And then the next misconception is what is the NBT pass mark? Because of course with the NSC um, you have your pass marks, you know what you need to get in order just to get through matric and you know what you, what you need to get just to get through, uh, just to get into university to get your bachelor's pass. 
and again, these glazed expressions uh, suddenly woke up. I want to know what, what I need to get on the NBTs, and I had to say to them, there is no pass mark. Okay, so <laughs> the key to um, the NBTs is that uh, is in the name, the National Benchmark Tests. So your scores place you in a benchmark, and I think uh, one of our pre next presenters, possibly Natalie, is going to address the benchmarks um, properly. But just briefly, you have your three benchmarks, proficient, intermediate, and basic, and these benchmarks um, tell university something about your readiness for university. So if you get between naught and 30, I'm just making this up, it's somewhere here, naught and, okay, naught and 38 for AL, um, you would be expected to not uh, cope with university studies. If you get between 68 and 100% for AL, you would be ready for university studies. If you're somewhere in between, then universities say that you are probably ready, but you might need some support. Okay, that's all I have to say at the moment. 